it's uh, based on Phil's demonstration of the calabash style bowl and what the challenge was was to turn something where the rim was smaller than the greatest diameter so we'll start with phil don't forget to grab your ticket if you brought something i'll start since it was my challenge uh and thank you to everybody who did do the challenge it's Fun to see what people come up with after you uh, show something. So this is one of the videos that I made last uh, last month, and I took the bottom off right there and uh, finished it up uh, and uh, doing just a little sanding on it. I think I had mentioned that uh, um, I just sanded with like 320, 400, and then burnish it with a nylon pad. And then uh, this one has a little bit of like a tongue oil finish on it, so it's. Nice. It's kind of like a top, actually. I don't know in the middle, and so it's going to be the plant to bottom. So we'll see how long that goes. Um, and I want a few more this this uh, this month. Um, but I just made this one the other day, and it's not even finished drying. I got to let it dry a little bit longer, and then finish burnishing it and uh, and put some finish on it. Um, but I got a little, a little too excited, and and come on, I actually get up in with the tools that I had, and I didn't want to reground to get in the bench. So I made kind of an inner room, uh, similar to, um, you know, I guess I should say, inspired by William Flynn's work. He's an Irish wood trainer, passed away a few years ago. But if you look it up, you can see some supporters of his work. He has kind of this double end thing that he does. So I got kind of excited about that and going to try to explore that more. But, uh, um, but yeah, and, uh, I did it down. I didn't start the curve on the inside of that bed, but since I got out of the structure, I didn't do as nice a curve on the bottom of it, but it is all um, just uh, gliders again, and then uh, um, and then just the same 20 and 400 on the outside inside. So, Um, this one is a uh, collaborative with my daughter, who's doing uh, pottery type items, and so she was making a bunch of the of the bowls, and then I was doing you know bases or wood. So you can either display it as as a stack section, or you can take it apart and use it as a two pieces. So uh, this was fun. We do a lot of she she does quite a bit with pottery now. We think of different things we can do um, to combine the two. So. So I got two examples. Oh, got two examples here. Um, one is a piece of silver maple that one of our members uh, brought in wet, and Sue and I were the only ones in in the shop one Thursday. I think it was the Thursday that Anthony was uh, down at SWAT, and I. The exciting thing about this bowl was that uh, I finished it in about an hour and got it fairly evenly done um it, it took me about four hours to sand it because of <laughs> all the tear out and things that i had from turning it so wet and not getting a good cut on it so uh phil i need to pay more attention to your inside curve cutting and and the tools you were using but uh i did get to a form that was uh smaller in rim than it was in the widest diameter and that was my goal this is another uh, little piece that I did, same, same thing, trying to get a uh, wider diameter than the mouth of the, of the hollow form. And this is one of the ways that I was thinking in terms of incorporating the uh, optical lenses. It just kind of created a fun little top that when you look into the bowl, then it uh, magnifies everything inside of it. So I don't know whether I'm going to put really small diamonds and make them look bigger or what I'm going to do there, but that's it.
So this is another calabash bowl that I uh, that I just finished. Uh, the first one that I had done, I I discovered an error that I had had created by when I when I pour the resin in there, um, it would bleed through on the inside because I'd get it so thin. Um, the resin would bleed right through that end grain. So this time around, in order to try and stop that, and, and I liked uh, Wendy's suggestion, critique your own work. And, and, and I do. I mean, I, I'm always trying to improve on my, on my work. So basically, I used five-minute epoxy coated here on the inside because I cut a, this is about an eighth-inch groove in here that the resin is filled into. And then by using five minute epoxy, and then that allows me to then glue on my my uh, hazelnuts uh, and then do my pour. Uh, it turned out great because it it's it's really clean. So anyway, really proud of it. Um, uh, and I don't know what I'll do for the next one. Of course, first, they're, they're half shell of uh, hazelnut, and then, and then I stand them on the dip hammer to get flat so that it's good. So, this is uh, an example of uh, one of the other that I learned here in the club. So, uh, right now I was doing this uh, double design in the Gary Hoover uh, gave us a thanks to you. And I got a little bit from the people. So we know uh, you can sell the work from some of the, and uh, as uh, the, um, the way what I always would like to hear on the sound. This didn't start out as a challenge piece. It started out as a practice for dyeing a similar shaped piece that uh, I plan to do something with, and I'm not sure what wood it is. So I'm doing some of the tests with ash and some with maple. Um, but Anthony said, oh, you have an, a challenge piece. <laughs> so I brought it along. I made my cal calabash bowl out of a nut. It's a uh, giant palm tree seed. They come from uh, Palau or some other Micronesian, I think of that whole region. Um, and I used a scraper on the inside of mine, so. <laughs> okay, it's been buffed. And this one is uh, Friday night at uh, Oktoberfest. And uh, I'm not sure what kind of wood it is. I had a bunch of... Uh, leftover pieces. This is how the piece starts. You start it, you cut it into different layers, and then you, as you glue it up, you twist it just a little bit, and that's what gives you the pattern. The problem was on this one is I lost track. 
So it goes, starts going one way and then it goes back the other way. And that's because I messed up and put the piece in wrong. And, but it, it still turns out pretty good. I mean, it, it gives it a little bit of a different, different look, but uh, it's just undercut and everything. And I'm like Anthony, I use a scraper. Well, it's not exactly a calabash bowl, but um, the the top is narrower than the, the widest part there. Um, anyway, I just this is my second piece on Effie's uh, lathe that I bought, or my lathe now. Um, <laughs> this is actually a piece of um, maple. It's a actually a limb that fell down uh, probably about a month ago from in my yard, so I cut it up and uh, felt I needed to do something with it, so I gave it a try for this. So. Uh, it's just a shellac. Put on real thick, too thick. <laughs> Where was that at the Irish Club? Yeah, <laughs> nice to be here, as I say. This is a Caro walnut. Started out as a seven inch cube, and it is smaller at the top than it is inside. And it's five inches deep, overall height five and a half. And there's a box in the center and it's held on by a little magnet to keep it just so it stays together. And uh, it's finished um, to 1200 with uh, walnut oil and a wet sanding. And if you can test your skills for deep turning, Try one of these because it's it's fun. And then you get to sand by hand because nothing else will go down there. So anyway, it was a lot of fun to do. I used everything I had. I used a carbide tool. I used a primarily a, a inside turning tool that I had sharpened all the way down five inches long as a um, what do you call it? A um, negative rake scraper. Wow. Okay, I think we got one remote challenge piece that if uh, we can, we'll get up there on the screen. Oh, yeah. And Kevin, do we have opportunity to get them on the mic? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, well, this is my uh, challenge bowl. Um, not sure what kind of wood it was, but it's uh, 13, 14 inches in diameter and uh, it was kind of a, a large for my lathe. So um, I like to call it my flying saucer bowl because from the side, that's what it looks like. That's nice. This is, that's Rick Tucker that's on there. Rick, Rick Tucker, yeah. And, and then um, the second bowl is another one with the uh, the inside diameter larger, or smaller. The inside diameter smaller than the outside diameter. And it's a piece of cherry. And it has uh, turquoise uh, epoxy in, uh, in cracks. Very nice. Let's give him a hand. Thank you, Rick, for uh, bringing in a challenge piece, and Mike will pull a ticket for you. Or okay. Chuck, will you pull one ticket for Rick? <laughs> All right. Now we need a uh, Rich. You're right. honest as the day is long. Why don't you go ahead and pull one? Well, that's okay, and I don't, I don't think you're going to look. I trust you. <laughs> that was yours. Lastly, <laughs> <laughs> two, two, four. 
four, two, four. If you've got those. <laughs> And that's the last time I'm picking which to be our honest picker. <laughs> no, it just so happens he picked his number. Way to go, Rich. All right, so uh, moving on, let's go on to our uh, show and tell pieces tonight. We got a few over there, so if you brought in a piece, come up and tell us about it. And thanks to everybody that participated in the challenge this month. This is a uh, um, uh, pepper mill. It's the first one I ever, well, second one I ever made. First one was kind of weird looking. And uh, I made this uh, similar to the way uh, Mike Mahoney made his in uh, SWAT. And so this is uh, hollowed out instead of just drilled. And I don't know, it probably doubles or triples the, the capacity. Uh, I just glued this on today. I used a... Uh, uh, the the pole saw we have here, and uh, it's two pieces of veneer. I glued the veneer together and then glued them into the slot. The, um, the crack is here. It's uh, and I ran this across it. It's and it's structurally it's not important. I don't think, but it makes it look like oh he fixed it, right? So. These are, uh, whenever I demonstrate, I, I uh, always feel a little nervous at the start. And so I get in a few minutes early and uh, these are my practice pieces before uh, I started uh, turning the pawns at SWAT. Um, I brought two pieces, the bluegill or the the uh, uh, little sunfish piece that was a hollow form. Um, and this piece um, is uh, one that I call the Four Seasons. A friend of mine uh, has a place, a beautiful place in Montana, right on the river. And he can catch all four species uh, right outside his door. So the next trip we make out there to stay with him, I'll, I'll leave this with him. And I, I think he'll he'll appreciate it. Um, the, uh, the little hollow form piece that I did, um, I uh, cut down a basswood tree a year or two ago on my place with that idea in mind. There's a guy by the name of Gordon Pembridge uh, who does um, kind of a similar style of that. It's, it's worth your while to look at it, look him up if you've, if you've never seen his work. But uh, that was kind of the uh, uh, where I got the idea for it. And so it was basically just a hollow form that looks like a top hat, has a shelf coming out the top, and then uh, hollowed it down to about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick, and then uh, uh, let it dry and then cut out the, the sh uh, fish forms. And uh, the inside was done with a uh, metal reactive uh, paints to give it kind of a blue green type look, look like water. So it was fun piece. You spend money. This was represented to me as a hard maple burl, and I can tell you it is hard. I want to spend a minute or two on a technique that I developed to do this. There is an epoxy fail on this. I had my flashlight out. I could show it, but if you hold it up to the light, you can see that it is. So the trick that I use to do this is I shape the burl. Now it's a solid burl, weighs probably 
40 pounds or at least. And so I shaped the outside of it to about a quarter inch of what I thought it would be when I would, would get it to where I wanted it to be. And obviously there are places on a burl that have undulations. And so I thought for a while, well, two thirds of this is just burl. So there's the mold for the rest of it. The trick is you take a garden leaf bag and a plate, plate or a plate with a little bit of water and some uh, hardwood glue, and you cut the strips that conform to the shape of the part that it turns smoothly. And then you essentially wrap the bowl fur or the burl first with clear plastic wrap. That is like the shrink wrap that you get. So, and the object is to not glue the thing permanently to the bowl because you want to get it back. <clears throat> so after you've let that dry for two days, you're able to just take it right off. And now you have two thirds of the mold and doing epoxy is an expensive proposition if you try to create a bathtub and stick this in it and pour. So what you do then is to scratch your head and say, how can I put the mold onto the other part so that it won't leak. And I said, let's use some construction adhesive in a caulking gun. And since you're gonna turn this off anyway, doesn't matter if you're gonna destroy the mold that you just made. So I essentially just ran a real heavy caulk right around the bottom here, took the mold that I knew already fit and put it on and just gently pressed it making sure that I had all the area pressed reasonably well. That's why it's important that you do a good job of molding. So then you, you know, put a little tape on, make sure you hold it in place, wait another day, and then essentially you turn it up and pour your resin. Now, the nice thing about this is where on the inside, it'll always be filled even if you core because you're gonna cut, you're gonna core this because it's still a solid piece of wood. So you core it and you've got the interior solid. You got the next piece down solid. And as long as you don't have a hollow space in the burl that you can't get resin to, you're done with the resin business. So in this case, I used a, a gray colored, I mean a brown colored uh, pearl resin type, uh, filler in the to get to clear, but I didn't put enough color and pigment in it that you can't see the actual burl surface. So this probably took about three or four weeks of elapsed time to get all these things because I used about four hours or one stretch and then we had to do other things. So then it's um, has been cast with resin to begin with. And so I created the whole rest of it with resin and then sanded off. And I built a little 30 degree slope, and bought a 10 RPM motor and put a shaft on it so that it basically could be uh, hot glued to the bottom and turned it and brushed it. And I found that a silicone brush that you get for barbecue is just wonderful for dealing with epoxy because it can be squeezy clean and you're done with it. No more throwing away foam brushes and them getting stiff and sticky. It just works wonderfully well. But invest quite a bit of time on sanding. So I'm really happy with this. And I'm pleased to sort of have the next challenge. There, this was, I think, a 60-pound burl to start with. And I've got one that's a 97-pound burl from the same source. Oh, wow. So we'll see if I ever get that in the in the in the, the game. This was Saturday night at uh, Irish Fest, and uh, it turns out uh, it's a flying saucer box. 
And then on the inside, I started doing uh, some of this coloration from the inside out uh, that the Wyoming woodturner has been talking about. And uh, then last Saturday, we were talking to Kevin, we we're looking at it. And uh, then I decided uh, to make it. First, it was just going to be a bowl. Now it became a box. Oh, and it's uh, American uh, walnut. And it's finished in Howard's, I always call it weed and feed, but whatever it is, uh, the orange oil or the beeswax. This one is a piece called Black Acacia that I picked up from Virgil's wood sale a few weeks ago. Um, knew it was going to be some pretty nice wood, but didn't realize how beautiful it was until I got to cutting it. I uh, was really excited about what I had come up with and the shape when everything was nice. And then I noticed a little black dot in it. And when I looked closer, then there was a line going with the dot that I realized I had sanded all the way through it and was going to into the chuck. Uh, disappointing by all means. Um, Anthony was there. He helped me figure out a way to get the center cut out, even using the cold jaws, is it? It's expand out. Um, and went home and turned about three different iterations of the centerpiece to try to figure out what looked good. Um, ended up with kind of a just a gentle bubble um, on the suggestion by Anthony and then carved that bubble out to the flower uh, in the center and I liked the simplicity of the center. I didn't want to distract from the outer wood but uh, I really liked what I ended up with. It was uh, going, it went from Total disappointment to uh, very excited about the end project. So I think that does it, doesn't it, for our challenge or for our show and tell tonight? Okay, so I believe we got to the end of another meeting and I thank everybody for sticking around through the, uh, to the last two parts of our meeting and anybody that can stick around and help, we got to get the chairs put up and get some equipment pulled out. But I look forward to seeing you next month and hopefully see some of you on Sunday this month or this week and Saturday of the following week for the top turning event. But good to see everybody. Thank you again.